Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Wind Ranger at your service. Phantom Lancer. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. The sack. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Omni Knight. Thanks, Yori. That's right. I'm Capitalist. I'm joined by my good friend and co-caster, Blitz. Good our first series, good friend. All right, so, a last pick on the night. We got to talk about that since the analyst didn't really get the chance. Yeah, this was something that actually I saw MVP Phoenix used to use a lot in Korea. We saw them use it at TI as well against, uh, I can't remember, but I think they used it against Newbie. If I remember mm -hmm. correctly, where they ran the Omni Knight in conjunction with the Shadow Fiend, just to make sure that the Shadow Fiend could play a little bit greedier, doesn't have to go for the BKB immediately, and it's just one of those heroes that can really protect your heroes and sustain the push. All right, so we're gonna start things off. Ooh, Team Secret are actually gonna be going for a five-man smoke here into the enemy jungle. See if they can get that early pick off and perhaps get our uh, mid laner an early start here. The the other side we want to talk about is the the Spectre pickup. Spectre's been a really popular hero so far in this patch. Uh, feels like one of the big winners of the patch changes. Um, we may have to hold that thought though because Black. He may be forced into an early doppelganger, or maybe even first blood if they set this one up right. If they can get the early sleep and just chain stun black, Team Seeker will be in a great position to start this first game. But as the smoke wears off, they're going to kind of lose their opportunity. They're waiting for black to choose to head up towards that battery rune area. Spectre, Eternal Envy actually showing himself a little bit, and looks like they're just going to reset back to lanes now. I think they think that this gank is pretty unlikely, just because it is a Phantom Lancer. Uh, they know that Black is a good enough player where he's not going to skill yet. And I think once he just pops Doppelganger, yeah. yeah, Smoke's wasted, you probably waste a few abilities and you can't really afford that. So it's better to just reset the lanes and make sure that everyone's in position. Uh, but for me, the mid matchup is going to be really important just because we've talked about it in the past and a lot of players said it at TI as well. Like, if Mushi gets a really good start, if he's able to get the mid lane snowballing, Fnatic is really hard to stop. And in that case, shouldn't Pylai die and um, and Puppy, you know, try and rotate into the middle lane and shut down Mushi as early as possible, especially since it is a Radiant Side SF. Yeah, this was the Pylai die play. It was pioneered <laughs> in like MLG Columbus 2013 yeah. speed gaming days where he would play that Skywrath Mage or that Wind Ranger, come to the mid lane, trade a few blows with the enemy mid, and then just run off. Mm -hmm. And it's even more annoying when a Bane, because all he does, he just runs forward and enfeebles you. And an SF, who already has such terrible starting damage before you get any souls, he has nothing. But you can see what Mushi has already done. At level 1, he goes for the early Shadow Races. This is obviously a necessity against uh, Bane support. Yeah, when you know that once you see the Bane, Mushi waits his skill. He, he's also going for a fast bottle, so going for this build is probably typical, uh, typical anyways, just because he knows that it's more likely that a support will come from Secret, and he doesn't really mm -hmm. have a support that can counter that. Like, yeah, Dazzle's I mean, okay, but what does he actually do when it comes to trades? Right. At, at a level 1 Shadow Raise, it means you're going to be burning through a lot of early mana, right? <laughs> if, if you're having 30 of your 40 damage being taken away, you have to raise for every single hit, essentially, and that's going to be burning through mana very rapidly. So that 
quick bottle is really going to help out in that sustained CS war. Uh, meanwhile, on the Fnatic side, we also have the off lane. DJ is going to be playing the Tusk now. He's probably going to be matched up um, against the Spectre plus those two supports. You want to be able to give Spectre a lot of protection early on. The Bane Leshrac do have a lot of kill potential, especially when they get around level 3. Uh, a dangerous lane for Tusk through and through because they can kind of guarantee that stun does land. What do you think that DJ needs to do in order to make this lane a little bit better for him? Uh, just survive and wait for the supports to eventually go for things like the stack, things like rotations. Yeah. Because uh, I think I saw it in the past when Eternal Envy actually played Spectre. He had quite an easy lane. He was like one-on-one -on -one against an Earthshaker in the short lane on Radiant side. Right. Uh, if you remember that game, I think we casted it together. and He just had like the fastest Radiance as a result. But I mm -hmm. think it against a hero like Tusk, Tusk is one of the heroes that can really contest safe lane carries yes. as long as he has levels. So what DJ has to do is he just has to really be aware of where at least one support is. Because if... It's, for example, a Bane mid or a Bane stacking or Bane going off and doing other things. Then he knows that the kill combo isn't there. It's just the combination of the Leshrac and the Bane that'll kill him. Right. And you could see with the kind of aggressive wards that they set up, not only did they throw down an early counter ward in order to block out the pull, but also the ward above the camp that doesn't actually block, but just gives them some good vision, information on those supports and whether or not they're attempting to pull or actually rotating into that middle lane. Now, both offlaners here, and this is uh, a very interesting mechanic, uh, a part of the offlane that's pretty essential for many offlaners right now, especially in a pre previous patch, which is being able to block your creeps. Both Tusk, as well as the Clockwork, um, can pull that off. Tusk, obviously, needs to go for his Ice Shards. You can see DJ um, chose not to go for this route. It's a little bit harder on Radiant's side and not as effective as uh, Clockwork has on the Dire side, but Misery's already doing that block, though. He's he not. He's, yeah, he's not going for the break the cog and push them into the trees. Um, he's actually just trying to stall this up. I think that's because Puppy's actually joining him in lane in the beginning. Uh, what do you make of this? The, this decision to have their early presence in the offlane. I think it's mainly just because they're pretty greedy supports on the side of Fnatic. Uh, the one thing I really kind of dislike about Fnatic's lineup is the pure lack of disables that they have. Like this is just going to be an overall uh, greedy lane that they're going to be playing. Like, Omni Knight can't really trade one for one against anybody, especially when the Leshrac's there. And Phantom Lancer especially is a hero that uh, needs to snowball because he has to get ahead of the Spectre as fast as he possibly can. Because when it comes to teamfight contributions, the Haunt Radiance is just going to be so much more effective than Black coming in with Boots of Travel. Right. Pilai Dai, because he chose to go for that early and feeble, is not really going to be effective at all against the Tusk. So Tusk can actually play really far forward, especially knowing that the Leshrac is at this bottom lane. So again, giving the Tusk a lot of space, um, it it feels a bit dangerous. Now, Tusk isn't one of those uh, offlaners that gets really powerful at level 6 necessarily. Other offlaners are very dependent on it, like Clockwork. He can actually rotate early, but if he gets just as, as easy as like level 3, level 4, he could actually uh, either you know put a lot of pressure on the Spectre, or, or maybe even rotate into the middle lane. Alright, so they rotate the Omni Knight up, which I think is the right decision, because an Omni Knight's gonna, not going to be able to protect your Phantom Lancer whatsoever against that dual lane. Because what does he do? He heals once and then you're out of mana. It's better to just make sure that DJ has an okay time. And uh, But Bane has pretty fast move speed, 315 base, so it should be pretty hard for Ohio to catch up, which oh, is why he's going to DJ Nora. <laughs> yeah, slowing down Pilei Dying. They're going to get a lot of right clicks out on him. Uh, unfortunately, no early Orb of Venom, but still bringing him down to uh, about 200 HP and not going to commit any further, it looks like. Ohio is actually going to draw a little creep aggro onto himself, but that's about it. If he was level 2 there, they actually would have gone first blood. Yeah. Either of them were level 2, actually, but this just kind of shows you that the Spectre pick is going to be a little bit greedy, but uh, still a lot of the focus is on the Bane, so this is kind of a net win for Secret overall in this top lane. And it's this bottom lane right now where Black's struggling really hard. Misery's already up to 8 CS, double what Black has right now. Weehaw, challenging Mushi, actually does get a good shackle shot, Puppy's on his way with the Invis rune, will be able to get the lightning, can they commit further? They do have a level 2 power shot, but Mushi is already bottled up significantly, so unable to commit to the kill any further, and Puppy perhaps going to rotate all the way up to that top lane to deal with the dual lane aggression of Fnatic. He has to right now, because they're starting to realize that uh, this dual lane is going to cause some issues, and Pylite Die eventually wants to get out of here, wants to be able to stack and pull, uh, and actually gain some levels for himself, and... So he's actually going to rotate up top. You can see even Misery as the offlane clockwork did get his early level 3 and went for the two levels of rockets, and he's actually spamming that up there towards the dual lane, just trying to put pressure there. But they found Puppy now, but they need to start backing up. They don't want to challenge all three of them without the level 2 of the Omni Knight, without the heal. They really lack a lot of that kill opportunity. So uh, they just get chased out of lane a little bit. 
Nothing major. Oh, the snowball. Now they're going to go on the puppy, slowing him down. He has no support behind him, but a nice double stun might be able to give him the space necessary to get out. Eats through the trees, puppy blocked up by him. the creeps very slightly, but he's staying just ahead of that DJ Nor until second level of ice shards. Oh, Tracks him in, and that's going to be the first blood. DJ picks it up. A nice TP out from Ohio, but DJ is probably going to be caught here. Pili died chasing down. DJ actually gets a good amount from his healing self. Brain Sap puts a stomp to that one, but he's just going to buy a lot of time at this point in time, unless, well, Puppy's going to TP into the tier 2 tower, and he goes for the stun. We'll be able to land it, and DJ will fall. So some revenge for Puppy, but still, the uh, critical first blood does go the way of Fnatic. And at the same time, the Tusk just completely tries to buy out. Uh, grabs his boots now, and this lane just gets a lot more dangerous. Unfortunately, because it is a Spectre, Eternal Envy can't really afford to leave the lane to help out the rest of his team. And I kind of agree with that decision, because it's going to be hard for him to get farm uh, against this type of dual lane, and so it's important for him to just get it where he can. Uh, Misery, though, is probably the biggest winner of the laning phase so far, already up to 18 CS. Talk about when it comes to levels, usually that's all you need as an offlaner, but he also has the last hits to couple with it. Yeah, so we may be able to see maybe uh, an early blade mail, though I'm not sure how effective that's going to be. Really, it would be best against the SF. The rest of the team feels a little lackluster. What other the items would a Clockwork go for with this kind of early lead? Uh, you, can go for the, uh, you can go for the Force Staff. I think it's actually quite decent when you're playing against this many heroes that can just burst you down. Yeah. For example, if the Omni just repels the Shadow Fiend and you hook and blade mail onto mm -hmm. him, it's kind of a wasted item. Yeah, Whereas completely ineffective. You get the Force Staff, then you can kind of play the kite game. Like, force the SF into the cogs, make him waste his hits and his repel charges, or uh, his repel timing on trying to break out of the cogs. But right now, both the laning phase is going to be relatively passive until the SF gets at least like half a major item. Right. For him, maybe even the SNY is pretty decent here. Uh, because he knows that he's going to have the repel always for him. And going for the stats, I think, is pretty good here. Because you just want to be able to snowball down the mid lane with your SF having enough farm, enough levels on repel, and trying to stop the game before the Spectre becomes too much of an issue. Mm -hmm. And even the early Radiance timing won't hurt Fnatic too much just because they have so much sustained heal. You've got the Dazzle, you've got the Omni Knight, you've got SF who's kind of a naturally tanky core yeah. uh, with his item build progression. Does he still go for the mech? Uh, it, it feels like because you have the carry PL behind you, Oh, that yeah, you can right. afford to go still for that extra heal. Yeah, I think going for the mech is a good idea here too. Yeah. It just depends on what Mushi decides to do. Like Mushi kind of oftentimes does something that I don't expect. Like when he goes yeah. for the blink first on the Shadow Fiend at TI. Yeah, he has some very um, atypical ideas for some heroes. But uh, seeing as his progression in the middle lane, he's sitting at 22 and 10 compared to the 23 and 10 on the Wind Ranger. Uh, so SF has finally caught up um, that. Early pressure from both the Bane and then Wind Ranger, I think, is just a naturally good hero to take advantage of that sort of um, early pressure from a support. Wind Ranger was leading in CS for most of the time, but SF, once you hit level 5, it's pretty hard to shut that down. Yeah, once you hit that level 5, level 6, uh, you get the three levels of the Shadow Rays. It's pretty hard for the Wind Ranger to zone out. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't really have any stacks built up, and that's what Misery is counting on right now by going into the jungle. But this will kind of tip them off that Weeha is doing just fine in the mid lane, yeah. and they don't have to overly pressure the Shadow Fiend. And uh, Misery doesn't have that hook shot up quite yet, but they have devoted the Lush Rack here too. And I think he's just going to go for the swing around the back and set up for this. And if they can bust him down immediately, maybe they go for this and. Oh, the Cogs actually misses still, though the Shackle Shot comes out, they get the stun, Mushi will end up going down before support could get there. Ohio was running in, but just didn't get there in time, same goes for the Dazzle TP. Yeah, neither the Shackle Shot or the Cogs landed, but it didn't really matter just because Puppy was there. Uh, they even used the Haunt just to secure that kill, but I'm okay with that, just because it allows Eternal Envy to be a part of something. Yeah. And that's one of the, the big things, especially since he is going for this urn build now. I really like this build on the Spectre because you can be a part of so many kills thanks to that ultimate. Um, and I feel it provides a lot of early pressure. But what about the changeup here? Because we've also seen, uh, I feel like the standard build right now, popular, popularized by some of the best carries, is actually going for, for treads, maybe drums, and then you start going for that Radiance and early stat build. But... Phase boots did kind of get buffed up. I feel like the phase also works well with the early aggression of the urn. Do you think Eternal Envy would consider that kind of hyper-aggressive build on Spectre or still fall back on the more uh, stat-focused build? I think you go for the stat-focused build. Uh, I don't actually think you go for drums or anything like that. I feel like that's a pretty heavy commitment. Uh, I think going for something like the Ring of Aquila is a lot more stable. Just go for the Ring of Aquila, go for Treads, and then go for the Radiance. Mm -hmm. That'll make you tanky enough and... 
uh, make you actually useful in fights. I think going for a full drums though is way too heavy of a commitment in terms of item builds. Yeah. Ohio, gonna be spotted out by the Rockin in the middle lane. They're putting a little bit more protection on Mushi. They can't afford to allow a secondary gank like that, especially without any stacks for him to catch back up. Uh, pressure on DJ, but will be able to stay just ahead of the sleep coming from Pilot Eye. Yeah, this, uh, this laning phase is still going pretty decently for both teams. Uh, Secret have a minor advantage, but I think that's pretty heavily concentrated because of their offlane mm -hmm. and just how well that's been able to do. And they're actually making a really aggressive move on Pi. And yeah, they block him out. out. Nice ice shards, and they'll just burst him down. Puppy's two man stun doesn't really do much to save Pi's health. Oh, nice TP out from Misery at the bottom lane. He was kind of trapped by Black and didn't want to risk it, so he just pops the cogs and TPs out. Still a pretty decent rotation. They were able to get a lot of XP on some of their heroes. Unfortunately, it's just a Bane that's actually a lot more leveled than I thought he'd be. He's already up to level 4, which is better than what I expected considering how much he's been able to rotate. Yeah, a lot of uh, effective pulling from Team Secret. Being able to get a couple of double pulls here and there. DJ, it's very hard for him, especially without vision in the enemy jungle. Like, that, that ward ended up going down. And now he has no idea if Pi is there, where like where the potential kill power is. Because once he gets hit by the sleep, he's almost all but guaranteed dead. Yeah, what's weird right now is that Mushi, uh, he often likes to do this. He saves up some gold. He actually buys the full buckler, so it will be the mech. And I think this is just going to be one of those games where Shadowfiend gets a mech, uh, gets some early stat items and they just try to push behind the strength of that and the repel. Yeah. Because eventually the repel does get kind of weak, especially when you've got uh, there who can just purchase the defusal, use it repeatedly, right. purge off the guardian angel and the repel. Now you could see one of the big buffs to uh, the Bane in this latest patch in this bottom lane. They're actually keeping him as the offlaner here, and with the very low mana cost of the brain sap, he's able to spam it out a little bit on black, and between that and the rockets, they've actually forced him back to his bottle. Start reaching out. M Mushi, meanwhile, as you guys can see, has been clearing through some of the jungle. Alright, so SF... Bell doesn't have reds, but I think, I guess, he feels comfortable with just the Belt of Giant Strength as an HP booster. Mm -hmm. But treads is so efficient to get. This is just kind of one of those things that I feel like Mushi's pretty unique in. He changes his around his build so frequently. Yeah. It reminds me of certain clockworks that I've seen. Just go for the Belt of Strength and not actually complete the treads just for the early stats, and then go for that secondary item like the Blade Mail or Urn. Um, it's so effective though in tread swatching, uh, yeah. tread swapping for especially a Shadow Fiend. Mm -hmm. He's got some jungle stacks going for him as well, so there's no real reason not to go for it. This says a lot about the pressure of the early mech though, doesn't it? Mushi, you know, sparing that extra 500 gold just to be able to pick up that mech a minute, minute and a half faster. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but Weeha's doing pretty fine, and they're gonna go for the gank attempt on mid, even pushing him back with the cogs. Eternal Envy's gonna commit for this too. Yeah, Mushi's very dead with all three heroes right there in the middle lane, and this is where we really needed to be able to have one of those uh, healers behind, but Team Secret just chose the perfect timing to gank up that SF as Ohio was a, a bit far away at the time. Was unable to get that heal repel combo off. I think this ward actually spotted that Net was over here, and mm -hmm. even though he has a TP, they believed in their ability to just burst him down immediately. Uh, the Omni Knight wasn't in position for that, and it's twice now that they've been able to gank Mushi with those three heroes, and uh, this is kind of a troubling sign just because you wanted your SF to be able to snowball. Like, his mech timing is really going to be what determines the push. Nice pick off by DJ in the top lane with the double damage, but he's going to be caught now, especially with Eternal Envy using their urn offensively. DJ will go down to Weeha. Yeah, and securing himself the last hit with the power shot and getting pretty close to that Aghanim Scepter. And Windranger is a hero that uh, I felt like was going to be really strong in the patch just because she was one of the untouched heroes overall. Yep. Her Templar Assassin, Ember Spirit, Shadow Fiend were relatively untouched, and uh, those are going to be the heroes that we'll probably see a lot of this weekend. Now, they do, I feel like everything's going really well for Team Secret, um, except for one thing. They are giving a lot of free space to uh, Black. He hasn't been a part of a single kill and is still almost keeping up in net worth to the top two on Team Secret. That last hit on the tower is certainly going to help out quite a bit. He's got 1,500 gold in the bank. Does he go for the early defusal build, um, or do you think he should stat up a little bit more? I think going for a little bit more stats than this will be helpful, just because... Uh, most of the heals and stuff like that are going to concentrate it on keeping Mushi alive. I guess it's okay because they've got a Dazzle and an Omni. That's like a two-step protection system. Yeah. But at the same time, they do lack a little bit in damage, so maybe going for the Diffusal early wouldn't be a terrible idea. 
A three-man smoke up. Fanatic going to head their way into the middle lane. Now, this pick off on Puppy isn't going to mean much, especially if they dive in a bit too deep into the Tier 2 tower. Burst down Puppy. Weehawk gets a good shackle shot onto Ohio, but he does still have his ultimate, and there's no mass rotations out from Team Secret. They had the Spectre ultimate up, but it seems like some of the other heroes just weren't ready. Misery's a bit low. Now they're going to pop it. Go on to Mushi. What a great shackle shot. The Shadow Greg comes in just in time. The net does go down. Mushi just turns around and does as much damage as humanly possible. Will be able to get Pi before he dies to Eternal Heavy. Now DJ going to be tracked down by EE as well as Misery. And DJ is going to fall as well. A three for one exchange. Ulti, he'll turn around. Maybe DJ can actually get out just ahead of the power shot. Eternal Heavy still trying to get those right clicks in. Ohio's going to be slowed down on the right hand side. They finish up the Tusk. And now Black's here to try and save Ohio next, but the shackle shot latches on to Black. Now he's going to be in some trouble. Mana, he's going to go down. No mana from Ohio whatsoever to turn that around. Snowball comes out from DJ, but it might just be a bit too late. Eternal Olivia does get bursted down. Ohio brings the purification to full just to be able to get that kill, but it cost them a buyback and four different heroes in the process. They had to commit so much for that mid-engagement, and I mean, Team Secret are just playing around the haunt so well. Eternal Envy does go for the Aquila drums build, or uh, the urn build, and foregoes the drums, and he's pretty close to his relic now, just 1k off from that, and that usually just means he's going to farm out the jungle, go for the Radiance, and Fnatic still haven't really gone for that death bolt yet, and... I think that was just a little bit too greedy for Mushi. Well, that's a bad time for Pi to pop that smoke. He even throws down the counter ward, assuming, oh, they must have had a ward here, but no, nope, just a counter ward. So just good positioning, I guess, from DJ. Mushi goes back to clear out the rest of his stacks and finish up that mech, which is desperately needed. I mean, you could see the, the lack of that mech in that team fight just meant for so much for Fnatic. Yeah, and it was more just the fact that I think he tried to min-max a little bit too hard. Like, he had yeah. 300 HP, but he had a regen rune the entire time, and he thinks to himself, okay, I can probably just back off, re-engage with the regen. They wasted a lot of abilities, but you can't really afford uh, to do that against a Spectre, especially. Hard time. 68 right now, 15 minutes in, and Team Secret have taken an early lead in this game one in the best of three, a 2,000 gold lead, a 1,500 experience. Uh, Fnatic do hit a certain swinging phase, though, in the mid-game, right? Because they have these double heal healers, especially uh, Ohio's Omni Knight, which I feel like is a little bit greedier of uh, a support pickup. They will be uh, quite the powerhouse going in about 20 minutes between the mech and the double healers. Yeah, you want to just be able to use the mech, the advantage that you have in all these healers. That uh, The problem is that you don't have the most mobile cores outside of uh, Black playing the Phantom Lancer. So when it comes like, to the older late game, yeah. you might be in some trouble just because of uh, you're playing against a Wind Ranger, a Clock, and a Spectre. And they're going for right now as Mushi backing him up with that mech, but it looks like they do want to defend for this tier 1 tower down at bottom because it is... Still pretty healthy. Oh, they go for the snowball immediately, and now more TP's in, but Misery's gonna be able to keep everyone blocked out. DJ is gonna be able to get the walrus punch onto Misery, slowing him down a bit more. The lands comes out, but it's not enough to finish off Misery with that haste rune. Does get out, so Fnatic, I mean, I think that was generally speaking the right idea. They wanted to be able to take that tier one tower, but Team Secret knew, okay, with the mech and everything else, we can't really five on five fight them right now. Let's just wait on the radiance. So instead, they go for the split push. Fnatic try to catch them, but doesn't really work out. Ice Shards does block Pile I die in. DJ is going to be able to go for the snowball here. Pi is going to get bursted down. So great pick off and that may turn into another tower for Fnatic. But as I say that, Fnatic kind of hemming and hawing where they're going to go to. Looks like they're going to go to middle lane and try to take that tier 1 mid. They've got to be really decisive here because yeah. they know that Eternal Envy is pretty close to that Radiance. Like, they have to actually feel it, because he hasn't gone for the treads or anything like that. It's been a while since he's died. He's already been a part of seven kills so far in this game. Uh, all but one of his teams, and he's been farming pretty hard. Kind of have to take advantage of the timings in your items, because you're not really waiting for an item on DJ. Like, if you look at his item build, he's got the treads, but he's not really scaling very well. Your two supports don't really have disables, uh, so they're not really going to provide too much for you in lockdown. So it really just comes down to be able to snowball off of these cores, but Weeha already has that Aghanim Scepter, and it's going to be pretty scary for Fnatic, just because Secret now have a ton of damage on their side. Black continuing to farm away, does get the first Blade of Alacrity to uh, what could be the Diffusal Blade. I don't really feel like you have the room to go for the Asha, so yeah, he completes the Diffusal now. I think you have to, because if you look at the builds, uh, you are going to get pretty far behind once the Spectre has a Radiance. Yeah. And when it comes to team fights, it's going to be pretty brutal, so I think they just have to scale as fast as they possibly can. Um, but Secret are just playing the waiting game. 
only losing uh, all their outer tier 1 so far. Like, they can still give up all their outer tier 2s if they want to, and they'll still be in okay condition. Mm -hmm. But by the time that Eternal Envy has his defusal, they should be able to defend them all. And that means Fnatic just have to be a lot more decisive, uh, being able to use pretty aggressive smokes, trying to get wards out into the jungle, and just playing aggressive overall. Eternal Levy, he can feel it. He even throws out the dagger, the last bit of mana he has just to farm that much quicker because that last wave and maybe this wave might be able to finish it up for him. Meanwhile, Fnatic are going for kind of a two-man gank, DJ and Ohio. As a smoked up duo, might just be able to pick off Misery. Unfortunately, it's smoke fades to Misery. They reveal him, but he's already TP'd out. All right, there's the timing we were talking about. And pretty much every Dota player since Dota 1 knows this timing, is that once Spectre gets a Radiance plus Haunt, everyone's lives get so much considerably more difficult. Yeah. And this is a really quick Radiance, too. He's been relatively under pressure, uh, unpressured. And this is just because Seeker kind of realized when you play a hero like Spectre, it's not about playing entirely defensively, it's about using that haunt aggressively, creating space for yourself, and not just waiting for your Spectre to passively get a Diffuse, or uh, Radiance. Right. Spectre, level 12 is in well. Now, this is also a pretty typical trade-off. Going back for quite some time in uh, Dota 1 and Dota 2. The Roshan in exchange for the Tier 2 tower, the top lane. However, uh, Fnatic actually split their forces, which is a bit dangerous against the Radiance, but uh, they split their forces, keeping the SF on, in the top lane and running the rest of the four heroes towards that Roshan pit. Team Secret were forced back, and Fnatic now in a position to be able to take the Tier 2 in the middle lane as well. So, all things considered, all this for a Tier 1 tower at the bottom lane. Really good trade-off by Fnatic so far. They're going to get quite the net worth lead if this is allowed. But Team Secret looks like they're going to mount up for their first real defense of a tower. And I think they should. They've got so much going for them right now. They've got a lot of their core items. Misery just goes for the medallion. I think because they want a quick way to go for the Roshan. And yeah. Eternal Envy is just frontlining right now. Doesn't really care. Understands that he's tanky enough and he has the haunt available. Yeah, he's even got seven magic wand charges just for uh, a nasty occasion. And see the circles coming out from Fnatic. They know that Roshan's going to be the next big objective. Question is, which team is really going to find the first opening? Team Secret can sit back, continue to farm up. The The pressure is really on Fnatic to find an opening, get a pick off on Team Secret, and utilize that opening to uh, take an Aegis. And this is the scary thing about playing against the Spectre, because Fnatic know that if they lose this fighter on the Roche pit, they've pretty much hard committed the game. Yeah. And so they don't want to go oh, in. Oh, the hook shot in. Matter. Misery, he makes a heavy commitment there, just throws out the cogs. They know Roshan is quite low, and already one race takes out one. We has going to be snowballed up. They're going to be able to take Roshan here in a second. It looks oh, like he's, he's going to try and go for it, but no, DJ grabs the Aegis right in front of Eternal Levy. And now he's going to pop the ultimate and attempt to get away, but he can't get out. Mushi picks up the double kill on Fnatic. That was so close to going wrong for them, but they enter into the Roshan pit at just the perfect time, and Team Secret lose three, lose Roshan, and give away that Aegis. Oh, that's so bad. Right now, they were hitting this really sick timing where, you know, they were able to contest a lot on the map, you had the Radiance from the Spec. Spec actually daggers in offensively and kind of goes to the YOLO play in. Yep. He gets the last hit on the Roshan, which is great for your Secret, but mm -hmm. the Aegis was the real target here, and uh, Mushi being able to... It's actually not on Mushi. Who, did I, who actually picked it up? DJ got it. So yeah, it's not, DJ it's the best. Gonna... But so you can see from the uh, the replay that we have going on here, Fnatic, they start going for the Roshan pit. Misery jumps in immediately, just trying to buy his team as much time as humanly possible. But Fnatic see that rain to go, okay, he must be trying to just throw it down from going to Roshan. They clear through everybody with some AoE, and then Eternal Envy, he gets that right click, but it doesn't matter. DJ steals the Aegis, and without that, Eternal Envy is done for. I think that initiation from the Clockwork was just like a second too early. He had to wait just yes. a little bit to create a little bit more space. Mm -hmm. But I think he thought that his team was going to be able to do it a little bit faster. But uh, it is it was the medallion that was helping them a lot. And once mm -hmm. that clockwork was out of that Roche pit, it made things quite difficult. But I think what Secret do now is just push out the waves as aggressively as you possibly can. Reset, wait for the Spectre to get huge again. Uh, and just kind of slow down the pace of the game. Because Fnatic, they didn't get the Aegis on the target that they wanted. Like, the Tusk getting it doesn't really change anything. Right. So it's not like they can go for this Death Ball push, but uh, Fnatic gets so much stronger as a result. Like, Mushi has a fully completed SNY, which is the build that we thought he'd go for in the first place. When yeah. go for these Death Ball pushes. And now he's going to go back for the BKB, it looks like. Yeah, I think this is just so that you don't have to rely on just the Repel. Mm -hmm. And this is a good idea, just because you can use the Repel then on the Phantom Lancer, uh, on one of your other supports, even on the Tusk, who can just kind of initiate with it. Right. And it just kind of makes your team a little bit more versatile and a lot less all in -y and relying on the repel. Okay, now I, I know this is going to be pretty off the wall and maybe a bit out there. Okay. 
So, uh, Blitz, we've talked a lot about Silver Edge versus the Spectre and how being able to take away um, the passive of the Spectre, especially Dispersion, means a lot for that hero. Um, do you think that would be a potential build, seeing as you have that Repel to fall back on, or do you really think having a BKB on, on the SF and freeing up the, the Repel to be placed on the, uh, the Phantom Lancer means more? I don't know. I, I personally really like the Silver Edge against the uh -oh. SF, but... Net, the hook shot misses, and he's just going to shell a grave and TP out because of that one. So, uh, looks like, yeah, he'll be able to heal through the urn quite nicely. And the blink away from DJ, he will also get out. This is still good from Secret. They're just trying to back uh, Fnatic out, make sure that they're not going to go for that five-man push. They want to delay it as much as they possibly can, because right. this is the type of hero that Spectre is, is that you want to just have that one ideal fight where the enemy team is heavily committed, and you've just got the most possible items you possibly can. Uh... But I think the Silver Edge, going back to that, it's an okay idea. Because Dispersion helps so much in Secret. They're going to get caught out here. Yeah, Weehaw's going to be the target of the Snowball. DJ will be able to follow that up with the Walrus Punch, just slowing him down for the Lance to catch up. Uh, Weehaw's trying to get away with his win run, and everyone's just abandoning Weehaw to his fate. They know he's caught. Uh, I was going to say, Team Secret are very far forward here, despite the fact that they don't have the Spectre Ultimate. I felt like that was um, maybe just a bit too much aggression um, from Team Secret, e including that Roshan attempt. Like, I felt like it was just a bit much from them. Mushi may be caught out here. Misery going to start taking him down with Battery Assault. They do not have a fiends group which is a big downside oh, puppy on the right hand side he's definitely done for his dj finds himself another double damage rune and he has very rapidly just climbed in farm ever since he stole that age has picked up the blink dagger and now he's got another 1500 gold behind him i mean dj what a player he's making so much happen around the map just keeping the supports poor keeping a lot of the focus on him and i think e going for the move at bottom when he goes to the haunt on that dazzle is a decent play but staying after was just a little bit too greedy he has to realize that fanatic are going to rotate for that fight yeah just because they know that haunts down they know that the specter still isn't too tanky and fanatic are just going to take so much as a result of that they're going to go for this bottom tier one or tier two push they've got the mech available everyone's relatively healthy they could even keep going on if they want all right, Mushi. Well, with the next couple of creep waves, he will be able to finish up that BKB, and we'll have a nice tanky lineup for Fnatic, especially with Black uh, beginning to work on what I believe to be a, a Scotty with that first ultimate orb. I'm not sure if the uh, Manta would really pay off with a lot of this AOE. Spectre ultimate gets popped, and they just deal out some damage. Ohio actually responds with his ultimate. They're going to kill the Tusk right here. Yeah, Tusk oh, is he done blinks for. out. They've already taken one Aegis. They're going to slow him down even more with Lightning Bolt, but he's gone back to the rest of his team. A Shackled Shot lands on the black in Ohio, and Puppy's going to try and combo that one up, but with the heals, Secret really cannot make a commitment onto the carry of Fnatic, so that was the Spectre Ultimate used to take away the Aegis that was going to go down soon anyway, and we talked about how it really wasn't that big of a priority on an offlaner like Tusk anyway. Uh, was that worth it for Team Secret? I don't, I'm not really sure it is, because I think Fnatic just say, okay, let's go for the push here. Yeah. Haunt is the one thing that really prevents us from being able to stomp fights, just because if we lose to a Haunted Spectre, that could just be the game, but Fnatic realized that spell is gone. Uh, Secret can't really do much to contest us anymore, because Windranger and Spectre aren't heroes that you want to be able to send into the front line to get into fights. You want to be able to play those heroes around space, and they can't really do that when Fnatic are just knocking at their door. Like, they're going to send the Repelled Mushi in, what do they actually do against him right now? They don't have the defusal available on anybody. There's no damage that can really go through this. Right, and especially with Lance after Lance forcing back some of these supports like Puppy, just keeps on taking the Lance, and then you've got the defusal. Illusion Blade hits as well. Finally, they do have the BKB delivered for Mushi, um, but as they get it, they're actually going to back up and take some time, more time to farm, and I think what they really want is to finish up this big stat item on Black, finish out that Scotty, and see if his tankiness combined with the SF, they can just run over Team Secret before before the Spectre gets big. Mushi's just gonna be magic immune for so long if they time things right. Yeah. You repel him, the 12 seconds, and then he uses his BKB, then the repels back off full down. <laughs> yeah. You repel him again. It's like 40 seconds where he's just doing whatever he wants, and Puppy might actually go down. He's quite low. They turn in Fiend's Grip onto DJ here. And the Repel does prevent a lot of the damage, but holds him there for some time. Unfortunately, there's no real trade-off, and DJ might just commit the Ice Shards. Oh, barely misses. Puppy does escape with just 70 HP. Still though, Shackle Shot onto net. Heal in, and Weeha is forced to blink back. And nobody goes down right now. Yeah. On the side of Fnatic. Just have so much protection for all their cores and all their heroes, and uh, Black's going to go for the split push, just forcing the waves, try to put pressure, and... And turn Lemby? I think he's uh, cutting the creep wave, trying to put a stop to this Fnatic push before they can uh, really gain some steam. But that being said, Black is also pushing up the top lane. 
And it looks like Fnatic may just make the commitment up there instead. Yeah, Eternal Envy has to go for this right now. Try to cut the wave, delay things as much as possible. And he's going to play on the enemy jungle side just because he knows that that's the safest place to be. Just because Fnatic want to get aggressive, he's got the Haunt available level 3. Uh, so his presence in the early fight isn't going to matter quite too much. He wants things to be delayed as much as possible and for a guaranteed fight for him to come in. Mushi throws out a lot of damage. I mean, with the repel and the heals that he can go back to, like, he even stood against the, um, the focus fire, the Wind Ranger. It was just like, whatever, I mean, you're, you're not going to kill me anytime soon, and you're not really going to threaten my sustain because I've got my mech. I also have jump in, DJ just pops the bane real quick. Oh, Misery's going to make his jump shackle. in, but a shackle shot onto Misery. Nice snowball save from DJ. He's going to be able to throw that one out back to Misery, who's just going to get blown out now by Mushi with a BKB ulti. And the rest of Team Secret taking that damage reduction are going to be forced back as well. And Turn desperately trying to dagger his way over the cliff, but he's not going to make it. He goes down as well. Puppy comes back in. Two minutes done. Shackle shot on the I put another snowball! DJ can't be stopped right now! Mushi! He finally does fall, but an ultimate goes out. Most of Team Secret have gone down. It's only Mystery who stays alive. More buybacks. Puppy as well. We hug. Pop theirs and the rest of Fnatic. They call it a day. That was a beautiful team fight. Sure, they didn't take the tier 3 objective, but they forced out so much from Team Secret. I mean, how many times can Weeha hit a double shackle on the heroes that he needs to hit and they yeah. still don't get anything out of it? That's just beautiful play by the Tusk. Every single time, right there with the snowball, he realizes it's a lot less useful as an initiation spell and just it's a lot better to be able to save his cores. As a result, Mushi was able to get that BKB off, was able to get that mech off, and uh, they were able to force the spec to hard commit too. And this is so huge because every single fight that they have, time and so he's not really scaling up like he should so far And we have a 10,000 gold lead for Fnatic, a 7,500 experience lead as well. Both of those leads aren't really out of the realm of possibility in terms of being able to come back. Oh, Team Secret, they're making a smoke Stop. initiation here. The Spectre Ultimate goes off. Ohio's going to be grabbed. Fiend's grip, but a Fourth Staff might just be able to save oh, him. Shackle. Shackle. Shackle Shot is going to be able to lock him down as well as Fnatic. And uh, that goes down. They have lost both of their healers. And Black, he's actually slept up right now. DJ is going to make a beautiful ice shard to block the rest of the Team Secret out to make sure there is no pursuit. So it's just the two supports. But it's still a win for Secret as they manage to draw out this game a bit more. And Roshan, I mean, beautiful timing for them. Roshan is up. They're going to go straight into the Roshan pit now. Man, this Weeha, every single time with the Shackle shots. Like, he manages to get it off on both the Dazzle and the Omni Knight. That's been pretty absurd, this game. Oh, the Sigil. And they have one buyback. That's from the Dazzle. And they also have this Sigil slowing him down. Team Secret can't make the commitment despite the two-hero advantage that they were supposed to under attack. Worry about it at all times because once yeah. that haunts down. Radiance top tower is under attack. Fear not heresy. Alright, so uh, Fnatic, they are going to be able to, to uh, take the Aegis as Team Secret weren't really uh, able to contest whatsoever. So the Aegis does go down onto uh, Black, his Phantom Lancer, and he chose to go for the Manta Blitz. Can you explain that a little bit? Um, as opposed to like the stat focus, Scotty? I think you just want to be able to send illusions in. 
sure. uh, to chip away at the towers, because that's really what's preventing you from going for the high ground pushes and fanning out, is that small pocketed space. And that's where the Wind Ranger and heroes like the Cl They want to be able to create as much chaos as you possibly can. And your doppelganger and illusions up every 10 seconds. And the Manta's been really buffed uh, for... Radiance top tower is under attack. Absolutely. The uh, jump in looks like that uh, little 2,000 gold bump that was dropped earlier by um, by Fnatic is actually now recovered thanks to that last team fight and uh, now even 3,000 gold lead there. Black keeping that bottom lane going. Uh, top lane DJ is actually going to be able to find Pylai Die. Glimmer Cape. Oh, he's trying to get away from that sigil, but it's just slowing him down so much. He pops a brain sap in order to get a little bit extra HP, but it doesn't matter. Oh, the Fiend's group actually goes down. Puppy's going to come in, stuns it up, throws out the lightning. They will be able to get the kill onto DJ before Pylai Die goes down. A fast push now coming out from Fnatic. They see a small opening here. Well, they'll be able to get some damage onto that tier 3 tower. Might even be able to finish it up before Secret have their defense. Shackle Shot goes out, doesn't latch to anything. Mushi does get his heals while Black is now on the front lines with that rappel. Bravely challenging Weeha pops a doppelganger. The glyph went out and Fnatic, I mean another small window that they are able to chip down that tier 3 tower but no real hard commitment. At the same time you get a tier 2 on Eternal Envy. He has that defusal blade up. 2200 gold on him and uh, you just need him to be able to scale as much as you possibly can right now just because uh, that's all you really need. Like, your spec just has to get 6 slotted. You can start defending these pushes pretty easily. The Shadow Fiend will eventually drop off just because he's gone for all of these meme items that don't necessarily scale very well, which is why he's going to go for the butterfly now, uh, realizes the situation that he's in. The high ground pushes still aren't necessarily there, even with the Aegis advantage that they have. Right. And forcing the buy box. That whole 4,700 gold save. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden he comes out. The... He's off this time. Yeah. Usually, most of the time, it just, like, irritates me. I'm just like, you have 6,800 gold as an anti mage. <laughs> You're gonna buy a Battle Fury. <laughs> all right, so... Finally getting things back underway. Toss, man. Uh, using, instead of going for the uh, BKB, actually goes for the full Desolator pickup. I really like this when he's, especially as the initiator, if he's able to get that walrus punch in somebody and, and you know, hold them in an area 
for a certain amount of time and also decrease their armor. Combined with the SF, who already has that natural minus armor uh, aura, they can actually just focus somebody down really quickly. And Secret don't have the best to stop that. They have a defensive uh, sleep from the Bane, but that's about it. Walrus Punch jumps in. Puppy immediately just gets torn apart by the Illusions. Glimmer Cape will fortunately be able to save him some time. Meanwhile, Misery makes a commitment on Amushi. Does manage to back out before the ultimate goes out. Barracks has fallen. The Radiant now have negative. 